ever really thought about your body's own instruction manual? I mean, your genome, that complete DNA set guiding, well, pretty much everything about you, your looks, how your cells work. But here's the thing, right? So much of that manual is still mysterious, especially those tiny little variations that can actually have a huge impacts down the line. Figuring that out has been a massive puzzle in biology. A huge puzzle. I mean, the genome is life's blueprint. We know that. Mm -hmm. But actually interpreting it, especially the subtleties, the vast non-coding parts, that's been a major, major challenge for scientists everywhere. Exactly. And that right there is why today we're doing a deep dive into something that sounds, frankly, groundbreaking. Google DeepMind's new AI tool, it's called Alpha Genome. It seemed like a really big step towards, you know, finally deciphering that complex cellular instruction manual. It really does aim to be that. So our mission today is basically to unpack this. What is Alpha Genome? How does it even work? Why is it such a big deal, apparently? And what could it mean for things like understanding diseases or even like synthetic biology? We're going on a bit of a journey, drawing straight from DeepMind's recent announcements to see how AI is maybe shedding some new light on, well, the blueprint of life itself. And that instruction manual analogy is spot on. Every part of an organism, its appearance, its internal workings, it all comes back to the DNA. And what's really fascinating and tricky is how just one tiny change, like a single letter swapping out in that huge sequence. Just one letter. It can completely change how an organism reacts to its environment or, importantly, how susceptible it might be to certain diseases. Okay, so if these tiny variations are so powerful, then figuring out how the instructions are actually read, you know, at the molecular level. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you get those small DNA changes? That must have been like trying to read this enormous complex book where, I don't know, half the sentences are in code. That's a great way to put it. It captures the scale of the challenge perfectly. And that's exactly why Alpha Genome was developed to tackle that very complexity. It's an AI tool, and its design goal is to predict much more comprehensively and accurately than before how these single changes, variants, mutations in our DNA impact all the biological processes that regulate our genes. So it's like a new kind of translator for that coded manual. Kind of, yeah. A very powerful one. And DeepMind has already put it out there in preview through an API. An API. So other researchers can plug into it. Exactly. An application programming interface. It lets other non-commercial research projects use Alpha Geome's power without needing to run the whole complex model themselves. They are planning a full model release down the line, too. Okay, okay. Let's dig into that. What kind of raw material does it actually use? What goes in? And then what kind of information comes out? So what goes in is a DNA sequence. And it can handle remarkably long ones, up to a million base pairs, a million letters at a time. A million letters in one go. That's scale. That's pretty mind-boggling. It is. And then what comes out are predictions, thousands of them. Predictions about molecular properties that describe the regulatory activity of that sequence. So within that massive million-letter chunk, how does it pick out the effect of just one tiny change, one variant? Ah, well, it scores the effects. It basically runs the prediction on the original sequence, then runs it again on the sequence with the mutation and compares the results. Okay. And what specifically is it producing some molecular properties? Right. Things like, where do genes actually start and end in different types of cells? Where do they get spliced together? How much RNA the message molecule gets produced? Even details like, which bits of DNA are physically accessible or close to each other or have certain proteins stuck to them. Really detailed stuff. Wow. And, and I had to learn all this somehow. Where did the training data come from? You can't just make this stuff up. No, absolutely not. The training data came from huge public projects. Consortia like ENCODE, GTEx, the 40 Nucleum Project, Phantom 5. Ah, I've heard of ENCODE and GTEx. <laughs> Massive efforts. Exactly. These groups did the hard experimental work measuring all those properties we just talked about across hundreds of different human and mouse cell types and tissues. It provided an incredibly rich real world data set for the AI to learn from. OK, technically, then this must be pretty complex under the hood. Can you give us a sort of simplified picture of the AI architecture? How does it you know, think? Sure. Think of it like a specialized team. You've got convolutional layers. They're like scouts, really good at spotting small, repeated patterns close up in the DNA sequence. OK, the local details. Right. Then you have transformers. They're like the strategic command center. They look at the whole sequence up to that million base pair length and figure out how different parts, even far apart ones, might be influencing each other. Long range context. Ah, connecting the docs across the whole sequence. Exactly. And all this computation happens really fast because it runs on specialized hardware, 
Google's Tensor Processing Units, or TPUs, which are designed specifically for these big AI jobs. So it sounds like it's standing on the shoulders of giants, in a way, building on previous work. Oh, definitely. It builds on earlier genomics models, like one called Informer, and it's designed to complement another DeepMind AI you might have heard of, AlphaMissense. Right, AlphaMissense made headlines. That focused on proteins, didn't it? It did, specifically the protein coding regions of the genome. But the kicker is that's only about 2% of our entire genome. Just 2%, wow. Yep, so what Alpha Genome brings is a completely fresh perspective on the other 98%, the vast non-coding regions. So wait, if alpha missense was looking at just 2%, this focus on the other 98%, that sounds like the real game changer here. How important to that non-coding stuff, really? Oh, it's absolutely crucial. For ages, it was almost like the dark matter of the genome. We knew it was important, but it was incredibly hard to read or interpret. These non-coding regions are basically the control panel. They orchestrate when and where genes are turned on or off, and critically, they contain a lot of the genetic variants that have been linked to common diseases. Ah, okay. So it's not just junk DNA, as people used to say. Not at all. That idea is long gone. This is where so much of the complex regulation happens. So alpha genome isn't just reading more DNA. It's giving us a way to understand the control logic of our genes in that massive non-coding space. It's a whole new level of interpretation for sequences that were previously very, very difficult to make sense of. That distinction really helps. Okay, so what specifically makes alpha genome different from other DNA models already out there? What's its sort of unique selling point? Well, a key one is combining that long sequence context with high resolution. It can look at up to a million DNA letters, like we said, but make predictions right down to the individual letter, the single base pair level. And why is that combination so important? Because the elements that control a gene can be really far away from the gene itself in the linear DNA sequence. You need that long view. But biological action happens at the base pair level. A single letter change can matter. So you also need that fine grained detail. Previous models often had to trade one for the other, look far but blurry, or look close up, but miss the long-range connections. Alpha Genome manages both. Yeah, I think you mentioned it does this quite efficiently. Remarkably so, yes. Training a single model took just four hours, apparently, and used about half the computing power of the original Informer model. That's a big leap in efficiency for this scale of analysis. That is impressive. Okay, so long sequences, high resolution. Does that mean it can just predict more types of things accurately, like a richer picture? Exactly. That combination unlocks what they call comprehensive multimodal prediction. Modalities just means different types of biological information or activity. So because it handles long sequences at high resolution, it can predict a wider range of these modalities simultaneously, things like gene expression levels, splicing patterns, DNA accessibility, protein binding sites, all from the same input sequence, it gives a much fuller picture of the complex gene regulation process. And it can assess the impact of a variant on all of this quickly. Very quickly. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it can score the effect of a single genetic variant across all these different predicted properties in about a second. It just compares the predictions for the mutated versus the original sequence. Okay. You also mentioned something specific earlier. Novel splice junction modeling. What's that about and why is it significant? Right. That's a really neat feature and unique to Ephigeum currently. It can explicitly predict not just if splicing happens, but where the splice junctions are located on the RNA molecule and how actively they're used, all directly from the DNA sequence itself. And why does that matter? It matters hugely for understanding certain genetic diseases. Conditions like spinal muscular atrophy or some types of cystic fibrosis are often caused by errors in this RNA splicing process. Being able to predict these splice sites and their activity directly from DNA gives researchers much deeper sort of mechanistic insight into how those disease-causing variants actually wreak their havoc. Okay, so it's got these unique features. It's efficient. How does it actually perform against the competition? How good is it in benchmark tests? Well, the performance is described as state-of-the-art across a whole range of standard genomic prediction tests. Okay, so when predicting features from single DNA sequences, it reportedly outperformed the best existing external models in 22 out of 24 different evaluations. 22 out of 24, wow. And when specifically predicting the effects of regulatory variants, those changes in the control regions, it matched or beat the best external models in 24 out of 26 evaluations. It's very strong. But what really emphasizes its breadth, its generality, is that Alpha Genome was apparently the only single model tested that could 
could actually predict all of the different biological modalities they assessed together. Others might be good at one or two things, but alpha genome covered the whole spectrum. That really drives home the unifying model idea. So let's talk impact. What does having this kind of powerful general model mean for real world science, for future potential? Well, the immediate benefit of that generality is for researchers. They can now investigate how a single genetic variant might impact many different biological processes, gene expression, splicing, chromatin structure all at once, using just one tool, one API. Instead of juggling multiple different specialized models. Exactly. That massively speeds up the process of forming hypotheses about what a variant does and then testing those ideas computationally. It just streamlines the whole workflow. So it sounds less like just another tool and more like a foundational platform that could accelerate discovery across the board. That seems to be the hope, yes. Because it performs so well across diverse tasks, it suggests the AI has learned a really fundamental general representation of how DNA sequence relates to gene regulation. That makes it a powerful starting point for the scientific community to build on. Researchers can adapt it, fine tune it for their specific questions. And presumably it can be improved further. Oh, for sure. The architecture is designed to be flexible and scalable. They can retrain it with even more data in the future, maybe cover more species beyond humans and mice, or add predictions for completely new types of biological modalities as the experimental data becomes available. We saw a quote about this from Dr. Caleb Leroux at Memorial Sloan Kettering. He called it a milestone for the field, saying, for the first time, we have a single model that unifies long-range context, base-level precision, and state-of-the-art performance across a whole spectrum of genomic tasks. That really captures it, doesn't it? It does. It sums up that combination of capabilities quite nicely. And that power translates into several key research areas. Like disease research. Definitely. For understanding diseases, alpha genome could help researchers pinpoint the likely causal variants among the many possibilities, especially in those non-coding regions. It can help interpret the functional impact of variants, which is crucial for rare genetic disorders, maybe even reveal new targets for therapies. So, moving beyond just finding associations towards understanding mechanism. That's the goal. And then there's synthetic biology. Designing new biological parts. Exactly. Its predictions could help guide the design of artificial DNA sequences with very specific regulatory jobs. You know, maybe create a sequence that activates a gene only in nerve cells but stays silent in muscle cells. That level of precise control would be revolutionary for building new biological systems or therapies. And just basic science, too, I imagine. Understanding the genome itself. Absolutely. Just mapping out the crucial functional bits in the genome, figuring out their roles. Alpha genome could significantly speed up that fundamental discovery process. And there was a concrete example this, right? Something about leukemia research. Yes, a really compelling one. There was an existing study on T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, TALL. Researchers had found specific mutations in patients. DeepMind used alpha genome to analyze those mutation sites. And alpha genome predicted that these mutations would switch on a nearby gene called TEL1. It predicted how to by creating a new binding site for a protein called MYB right near the gene. And this mechanism, activating TAL1 via MYB, was actually a known way the disease develops. Wow. So it basically rediscovered a known disease mechanism purely from the DNA sequence. Precisely. It showed its ability to connect the dots from a non-coding variant to its effect on a disease-relevant gene, providing that mechanistic link. We also saw a quote from Professor Mark Mansour at University College London saying pretty much the same thing. Alpha genome will be a powerful tool. Determining the relevance of different non-coding variants can be extremely challenging. This tool will provide a crucial piece of the puzzle. It seems the excitement is definitely shared. It is. But, you know, like any powerful new tool, it's really important we also talk about what it can't do or where the current boundaries are. Right. Acknowledging the limitations. That's crucial. So what are some of those? Well, one challenge, which is common for models working directly from sequence, is accurately predicting the effects of regulatory elements that are really far away, say, over 100,000 DNA letters away. That long-range influence is still tough to capture perfectly. Okay. What else? There's also ongoing work to improve how well it captures very specific patterns related to different cell types or tissues, making those predictions even more context-specific. A really important one for listeners, perhaps. 
It, it's not for predicting personal risk from your own genome sequence, right? Absolutely. Critical point. No. Alpha genome has not been designed or validated for personal genome interpretation or clinical use. Its purpose is research characterizing the potential function of individual genetic variants in a general biological context. So it's a research tool, not a diagnostic tool. Exactly. And related to that, while it predicts molecular effects really well, it doesn't give you the whole story of how a genetic variant might lead to a complex disease like diabetes or heart disease. Those involve much broader factors, development, environment, interactions between many genes that are way beyond the scope of what this model directly predicts. It's a vital piece but only one piece of a much larger biological puzzle. Understood. A powerful research assistant for specific molecular questions. So how are they actually making it accessible to researchers? Well, as we mentioned, it's available right now via an ATI for non-commercial research use. Okay. And again, they stress the predictions are strictly for research, not clinical decision making. They've also set up a community forum inviting researchers globally to explore how they might use it, ask questions, share feedback. It really emphasizes this idea of collaboration, of providing a foundation for the community to build on together. What an absolutely fascinating deep dive today. We've really unpacked how Google DeepMind's alpha genome looks set to, well, maybe revolutionize how we understand our own genome. Yeah. From getting a handle on complex diseases to maybe even designing new biological functions. It's a powerful example of AI tackling these huge, long-standing biological questions with a scope and resolution that just wasn't possible before. It really is. It shows how AI is accelerating science in ways that honestly felt like science fiction just a few years back. The potential of unifying models like this is immense. So here's something maybe to chew on as we wrap up. If Alpha Genome lets us model the intricate instructions in our DNA with this kind of unprecedented detail, how might that AI-driven understanding really change our whole approach to medicine in the next decade? Think preventative strategies, truly personalized treatments, maybe even creating entirely new biological systems. What insights about life itself are waiting for us when we can finally read its core manual with this kind of clarity? For the latest tech insights, visit em360tech.com.